In this video, I am covering hypovolemic shock. So what does this mean? Hypo means low. Volume, we're talking about just volume like fluid. So it means, it literally means low fluid, low volume. And then it's causing shock, right? So that's what, what it's causing because of low fluid. So as far as how the volume works, uh, we are talking about the blood here. So usually what happens is blood is pumped out through the left side of your heart, through your arteries, so you, and so your arteries and your veins, these are your veins, are both, they're both considered vessels. They're vessels because they carry blood. So blood is pumped out through the left side of your heart into your arteries. That blood is then carried to the cells, tissues, organs of your body everything right that blood is going to drop off the, the o2 and it's going to then pick up co2 and carry that co2 to the right side of your heart it then goes to your lungs your lungs right here and then it goes back to the left side of your heart where it's pumped out again right it's just the cycle of life pretty much your circulatory system what happens in hypovolemic shock is that, so this right here represents a vessel. This also represents a vessel. And I'm going to kind of close in right here. What happens is, let's say that this is a vessel um, when you're perfuse, perfusing adequately. So perfusion is good. I'll put a smiley face for good. Right? So we have enough volume in the container so if there's enough volume in the container that means your blood pressure is going to be pretty good right because it's just pumping out now if the same vessel has less fluid that volume that blood pressure is going to drop with that volume it's like a water hose when you fill it when you go ahead and open up so when you open up the water hose all the way water is rushes out right because of the volume in the space it's going to rush out well if you kind of turn down the water hose that fluid is going to come out much faster right much faster from the water hose i'm sorry much slower <laughs> so it's going to come out much slower from the water hose because you have less pressure because you have less fluid um so what happens when you have hypovolemic shock or when you have low pressure so what happens is your sympathetic nervous system kicks in, right? And it's kicking in because your tissues aren't being perfused adequately because of pressure going down. If pressure goes down, then your tissues won't get perfused adequately because they're not getting oxygen. So then ATP goes down. And there's a whole video on that that I've made already if you want to go ahead and cover that. Well, your body... It has mechanisms for you know, to protect you against this, at least for a little bit until it gets corrected. So if your blood pressure goes down, your sympathetic, your sympathetic nervous system is going to kick in and it's going to constrict your vessels. So if it constricts your vessels and it brings it, let's say now your vessel is about this big around or the, the circumference goes down, right? That pressure is going to go back up. So by your vessels constricting, it's, go it's just constricting to maintain that blood pressure. It's still going to go to down. It's still going to be pretty low, but it's, it's trying to maintain it. Also, your heart rate is going to increase. So your sympathetic nervous system increases your heart rate, and it constricts your vessels. And the whole point of this right here is to make this happen, to kind of maintain your blood pressure somewhat okay. No, it's trying to bring it up, but you're still going to have a low, a low blood pressure. So what can cause hypovolemic shock? Let's go over that. Blood loss, obviously, right? Hemorrhage. So hemorrhage is a fancy word for saying that you're bleeding. Fluid loss also. Uh, you could have internal bleeding, uh, GI bleeding, right? Or for significant trauma, you could have bleeding from trauma inside the body in the abdominal area. You could have uh, external bleeding. If somebody cut your, ar your, your arm off with a samurai sword, you're going to bleed out a lot, right? You can also be vomiting out, throwing up blood, which could be related to this, to your GI bleeding. So these are the ways you can uh, become 
hypo, uh, go into hypovolemic shock uh, via the blood blood loss. Also, uh, just regular fluid loss if you're throwing up too much, excessive diarrhea, if you're sweating a lot, and you're stranded in the Mojave Desert, you can go into hypovolemic shock. Um, also, burns. If you ever notice when you get a burn and it kind of blisters up and there's fluid in the bottom of that, imagine having that covering um, or over one fourth of your body. That could potentially make you go into hypovolemic shock because you're losing a lot of blood. It's, it's being taken out of your, your system, your blood. So, how is your patient going to look? Well, your patient is going to have a low BP, so low blood pressure, right? Because of the fluid loss in general. Also, your patient may have uh, increased heart rate because of the blood loss, right? Trying to bring that blood pressure up. So they might have an increased heart rate. Also, the skin is going to be cool and clammy. Clammy, and it might also look pale. The reason this is happening is because your sympathetic nervous system, remember, remember it's constricting the vessels. Well, what happens is that it, it constricts the vessels peripherally. What that means is far away. Peripheral is a fancy word for far away from your core. So your core, so this is a person. The core is right here. Pretty much wherever the, or more right here, I'm sorry. Uh, your brain, your heart's right here, and your lungs. So your body is, what, is telling itself, what do I need right now to stay alive? I need my brain. I need my heart. And I need my lungs. So it's going to constrict the vessels on your extremities, right? On the outside. And it's going to open up the vessels near your brain, head, and lungs to perfuse your vital organs. So as a result, you're going to have cool and clammy and diaphragmatic skin is going to be pale maybe because all that blood being taken away from your non-vital organs your skin is not not it's not vital right now to keep you alive right now your bones aren't vital either so because all that blood's being taken away from your non-vital organs to be taken to your vital organs you're going to have cool clammy and diaphragmatic skin and pale skin also so that's at least that breaks it down and kind of tells you why this is happening all right, guys, like always, if you have any questions, leave your comments below, and I will see you next time. Bye.